Uh, it'll be fun. I mean, uh, this lot, go back to the UTEP game. Uh, I think it's a great interstate rivalry. Um, it was fun. I mean, the, the kind of things that – I mean, it's a game that I hope we can get scheduled and, and play more often because I think it's good for both schools. Um, it was a physical game. I thought in the first half we played really physical. We, we did some really good things uh, on both sides of the ball. Uh, obviously, we took the ball away. We were able to score on defense. I thought we ran the ball really good in the first half. In the second half, we didn't run it as good, and it wasn't them, it was us. They didn't make some magical adjustment. We made assignment mistakes in the second half that we weren't making in the first, so those are coach coachable fixes. Um, it's always easier to fix them when you win, obviously, but we need to know what to do and how to do it significantly better to have a chance um, down the path of our, as we go, go to LSU and then get into conference games. Um, I think our football team plays really hard, and I mean, that's the seven turnovers. There's no magic formula for turnovers. Uh, as far as circuits and stuff at practice, we do practice turnovers during fall camp, but I think it's um, one, you have to have good enough players, and two, you have to, the ones, the fumbles and all those things are caused by effort and being physical. And the three fumbles were all punched out or because of hits, and we had enough guys around the ball to go get them. And that's the mantra around here, all 11 of the ball and bad humor. So I think they're playing hard, um, give, which has given us a chance to be competitive. I mean, we're a competitive football team, and we have a great opportunity to go to LSU this week and, and have some fun. Short and sweet. What else? What we got? What questions we got? LSU on paper speaks for itself. What do you say to the team beyond what they know about this perennial power program to get your message across about this? It's a great opportunity. Um, I mean, you could go down. You can go with cliches. You can say they put on their pads just like we do, one leg at a time with their pants. I mean, you can, you can say all those things. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you either are going to go in there and compete or you're not. And I thought last year against Texas A&M, the stage was too big. I thought we were scared. I thought our football team wasn't prepared. I thought they were the, – the, the moment was too much, and we played like it. In the first two minutes, we gave up two touchdowns. It's 14-0 with 13 minutes to go in the first quarter. And then once they settled down, we had some kids that made a whole bunch of plays and, and did some good things. Now, we couldn't block them very well up front on offense, and, and that led to the 34 nothing score. But I don't think they were – there was any expectation of success of any kind. No, I mean, our kids aren't afraid. We're going to go over there and, and – put up a good fight and compete. And if we can create some turnovers, it'll be a good afternoon. We're playing a good football team. I mean, they played uh, Florida State in the opening game. Uh, it was a great football game. They had a chance to win it. Jane Daniels obviously is, is very poised. I mean, he went the, the length of the field, went 99 yards after they recovered a fumble where Florida State was trying to put the ball game away. Got him into the end zone, and then they missed an, they get an extra point blocked. Um, the next week against Southern, they were the more dominant team. And they, I mean, it was 35 nothing in the first quarter. They played really good and, and ran away with it. And then last week against Mississippi State, it was a great football game. Uh, Mississippi State turned the ball over on the nine yard line on a punt return. Uh, there was three opportunities that Mississippi State had on offense that they went for on fourth down in their own territory that LSU was able to turn those into points in the second half. Um, and, and Zach did a really good job. It's, um, we're similar, but not the same on defense. So when I saw the matchup in the summer that Mississippi State was going to play them the week before us, I thought, great, they're going to practice our defense for two weeks. They're not. So it's okay. I mean, it'll, it'll, uh, they've got really good football players. Jane Daniels is a good quarterback. He's fast. He can run. And I played with him for two years. So, I mean, I know um, what kind of competitor he is. And he won that starting job at one of the premier schools in the country for a reason. He's that talented. So, I mean, it'll be – we have to have a great prep week of preparation and go down there and compete our tails off. Is there a preventative way from keeping your kids away from being in awe of a situation like that? Um, no, I kind of want them to enjoy the moment. I mean, it, it's – I mean, you, once you see – I mean, there's going to be 85 to 90,000 people. I think they had 98,000 for Mississippi State. They said they're expecting about 85 to 90 for our game. It's going to be 95 degrees during the day. There's going to be some humidity, not crazy humidity, but it'll be more humid than here. And as you grow up as a kid, I mean, those are the kind of things you see on TV. You see the SEC afternoon game. You see the crowd. You see the excitement. So I, I want them to enjoy it. I want them to have that aha moment. And then once that whistle blows, it's just a football game. Just a lot more people around. I mean, 
we could have a heck of an atmosphere right here if we get people to show up. They will eventually. And you were able to take the run away from, from Utah. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there an aspect of their offense that you could take away and make them one-dimensional? Well, I mean, they um, they don't run very many personnel. I mean, UTEP was – we got every formation, every personnel. I mean, they were 10, one back, zero tight ends means four wide receivers. There was one back, th- one tight end with three wide receivers, one back, two tight ends with two wide receivers. I mean, two backs with one tight end. I mean, they did everything. Uh, LSU doesn't. They're, they're 11 personnel, 12 personnel. And Jaden does a pretty good job of recognizing where the ball's going to, where the, the route concepts are going to develop. If we can continue, I think we've done a pretty good job this year so far of disguising coverages. Um, the safeties and the linebackers have done a really good job of moving around. If we can toy with him a little bit, hopefully that'll help. Um, I mean, we, we go into every game with the expectation to stop the run. And stopping the run is a tough guy thing. I mean, if somebody wants to run the ball down your throat, they're just trying to push their dominance on you. And so, I mean, our attitude is we're not going to let them run the ball. And then if we got good enough players to make plays and coverage and we can get to the quarterback, and then we'll have a chance to slow them down. But if they want to come out and try and smash mouth football with us, get in their 12 personnel and see if they can run us over because they're bigger than us, we'll see what kind of fight we put up. I mean, that's the, that's the idea behind it. But we always go into every game with the attitude that they're not going to run the football. And that'll, that won't be any different on Saturday. What, Steve? Coach, uh, has the travel roster already been decided? No, we don't decide that until Thursday. Um, we'll, pay, we'll take 74 guys like a normal conference game. Um, if you're asking for like Tavian, Tavian, uh, we won't know anything more about Tavian until tomorrow. He's got his MRI tonight, so they'll, it's late tonight, so they'll read that tomorrow. Um, he was out of practice today. Um, we got other bumps and bruises that I expect people to play, but that's the obviously that's the most uh, – glaring one. I mean, he didn't come back after he hurt his knee um, on the second punt. So we'll figure that out and then make a decision if he can go or what they have to do. Before the Boise State game, we talked about the fact that, okay, you're going to take a step up. Hmm? Um, do you need to talk to the guys to let them know that they're going to take two steps up to play system? I don't think so. I mean, they know who they're playing. And they're excited for it. Um, I thought we practiced pretty good today. Now we did. I mean, Tuesday is usually your uh, most mistakes in practice because if you're going to do anything new or any in, any new install or any little adjustments that you have to make for what they do, that usually happens on Tuesday. And then as we go down there and watch it, we decide what we can't handle or what we can. And then Wednesday you try and clean those up, and Thursday you perfect them. And if you're adding things on Thursday, you're in trouble. Um, I thought the attitude, the, the energy was good today. Um, I mean, there, there's – as a coach, you can make something way too big. And I think I did that a little bit last year against Texas A&M because I wanted them to go out there and compete and, and give themselves a chance, but we weren't ready for that moment. And I think on top of not being ready for that moment, I probably made it too big in the meeting room and the things we talked about it. I'm, I'm super excited. I've never been to LSU. So it's, uh, I see it on TV. And I'm excited to, to have that aha moment that, that Henry T was talking about. Um, it's a, it'll be a neat experience for our kids. But once the headsets go on and the helmets go on and the whistle blows, you, kind of, you can blank that stuff out. Now, if uh, the longer the game's competitive, the louder they'll be and the harder it is to emulate that stuff. I mean, we, we did try to do some crowd noise stuff today at practice just to, just to get some operational things done. But... We'll see how it plays out. It, it was not an issue last year at Texas A&M because it was never competitive. So we'll see. What do you think they respect most about your logo? That we play hard. I mean, Coach Kelly will tell the kids we play hard. I mean, don't don't just walk in there and think it's going to be easy because we play hard. I, mean, I, I promise you he'll tell them that. I'd be disappointed if he didn't. You saw a lot of good things against UTEP. I mean, is a bowl game a realistic goal for this team, your team? We got a football game on Saturday that I'm worried about. I don't know about all that other stuff. I mean, we'll have a chance to be competitive all the way down through the end of our schedule. I think we're we'll have a chance in every single game we play. Um, but I don't. I if you start talking about those things and worry about those things, there's a time to talk about that stuff. We talk about that stuff in December, 
and in January we come back from, from Christmas break and you say, okay, here's our goals. Our number one goal in this program will always be to win the fifth conference championship until we win that one, and then it'll be to win the sixth conference championship. So you start there. Well, if you go to, if you win the championship, you're gonna be in a bowl game. But obviously we wanna be bowl eligible because it helps in multiple facets. You get more practice time that you get to practice with your team. You, it helps you with recruiting. Um, you get to play on TV in a nationally exposed game. Uh, I mean, we have, I mean, the seventh game here at the University of New Mexico is, is at the University of New Mexico Stadium is the New Mexico Bowl. I mean, that's a, a great opportunity for the nation to see our community, our football stadium. It helps in recruiting. Uh, Jeff Ciambietta and, and those guys do a great job. It's a fantastic bowl game. And so we have goals to, to win a conference championship, to get to a bowl game, and be competitive in every single game. And if you start worrying about what's, what's on the horizon, um, you're not prepared for the one that's in front of you. Now, we have a short turnaround next week. We, we go to LSU, games at 6.30 LSU time, 5.30 here. We'll get back about 2 in the morning. Uh, we're going to practice. Uh, we're going to lift weights on Sunday. We're going to meet and have to have a game plan in by Sunday night because we're going to practice Monday morning because we go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we fly Thursday to play a, a conference game. So you prepare the schedule, but I haven't looked at an ounce of UNLV film or any of the other opponents other than what I see on TV when the game's on. So I, I haven't even – I. I guess it would say a lie. I haven't thought about it. I would love to be in a bowl game, but you have to prepare for the ones to give yourself that opportunity. Coach, good to you, Tep. You had a couple of drives, stall out, and then you go out and you miss a couple of kicks. When do you change in the red zone? Um, well, obviously, we, I mean, we're killing ourselves. We're making mistakes, um, especially up front. I mean, we're, if, if we call certain things and we do them a certain way against one look and we get the exact same look and we call the same play and we do it differently. I mean, that's just... We're, we're, we have them thinking a little bit too much, so we need to clean some of those things up because when you play fast, when you play confident, when you know what to do, you can do it very physical and very fast. So um, we, we thought we would see some different adjustments at halftime. We did not, and we might have screwed our kids up a little bit. We got to do a better job of making sure that they stay on track of what we're doing and eliminate mistakes, assignment mistakes. Those are critical errors. Now, we were the better team on Saturday, so – the game was, was never close, but I tell you what, if A.J. Halsey doesn't make that play on the third play of the second quarter, that's a completely different ball game. If it's 20 to 10, they have all the momentum. They scored with three, three minutes gone or two minutes gone in the, in the third quarter. We're going to be fighting our tails off. Well, A.J. made a great play. Offense moved the ball out of there, got down there and, and uh, changed the field position, and then we recovered a little bit on defense. Now, when we turned the ball over, our job on defense, I mean, we took it away seven times, great. Our job on defense is to go out there and stop them every single time. We turned the ball over on offense, and then we gave up a big play um, over the top in a zone coverage that we shouldn't, and we let them score. So instead of it being 20 to three with an opportunity to score 27 or 34 or 41, it was 27-10. I mean, that could have been a significantly closer game, but we had a, a young man make a great play after we'd messed something up. Are you thinking about making a change of kicker? Um, hmm. George had the uh, last three opportunities on. So after Luke missed those two, George came in for the last PAT. George banged the 51 yarder. Um, we'll watch them through practice this week and see how they do. I want one of those guys to just take it by the reins and say it's my job, and neither one of us done it yet. So we'll evaluate him during the week, and then we'll. Uh, and Saturday was field position based kicks until Luke missed. And then once Luke missed two in a row, then it was, uh, I went back to George. He had a little bit of confidence from the 51 yarder. And kickers, I mean, they both have good leg talent. George probably has the stronger of the two legs. Right now it's a 100% middle ba mental battle to be confident enough to go in there and knock it through the pipe. So uh, George was, I think he handled the situation well of getting demoted. Uh, I told him, just be prepared for an opportunity. That's all you can do. And he was. And he banged that 51-yarder right before half, and I thought that was huge in the game. And uh, we'll evaluate him this week. And then on uh, Saturday, probably a field position, game time-based decision. And I think it's good for him because that, I mean, you can look at it two ways. Well, you, you're not giving a kicker any confidence because you're not building them up, and, and he knows right now I'm the guy going in. Or, like George did, be ready for your opportunity. Gain confidence that way and go out there and put it through the pipes. So we'll, we'll tell them on Saturday. That's how I've decided to go. What up, Steve? Coach, uh, what do you have to say about those people that believe the offense needs a spark? 
and it comes from a quarterback switch. What do you think about that? I don't listen to him. I think our, our quarterback is doing a good job. Um, we've got some different things in there. Miles can, can fix to be better, but changing the quarterback right now would, would not be the best thing for our football team. And then you have four kids from Louisiana going back home. Can you talk about them, Justin? And- Justin, Chad, uh, Deuce, and um, Christian, Ella, or Jordan. Uh, who was from New Orleans, then went to junior college in um, San Diego. Um, they're really excited for the opportunity, and they're talking about how good the food is. And Justin Harris on our team is a really, really good cook. So um, now they ain't going to get to eat all that uh, Cajun food, but they can smell it or whatever. Um, they're excited to go home and have the opportunity to play in front of some of their friends and family, and, and some of them have been to LSU games growing up. So they've been talking about how neat it is and – um, anytime we have kids from an area that we go play, I mean, last year when we played in L.A. against San Diego State, we had a ton of family there, which is good for the kids now. Um, we, we don't let it be a distraction. They can come visit with their families. The families can come over to the hotel lobby uh, the night before the game and hang out for a little bit down there in the lobby. We don't do anything with them on Saturday. They can see them Saturday after the game. And then, I mean, we're not going there for a vacation. It's, it's go there to win a football game and come back. And that's the only – itinerary on that travel it's not a vacation it's not a vacation for the people that are playing in the game it might be for other people but it's not for us so they'll have fun and they've talked about it Coach, do you uh, have the time to pay attention to other conference games mm-hmm. say wyoming and Air Force kind of thing yeah I, I thought uh i mean we watched we actually so when we get to the hotel on friday nights for our team meals we have two tvs set up in there because I think it's good for our kids to watch football, and, and especially when it's a conference opponent. I mean, we had the Wyoming Air Force game on, uh, so we got to sit down there and watch it, and you'd be shocked at how many kids would rather stay down there and watch it after dinner than go to their rooms. I think it's good for them. And that was a great football game. Wyoming was playing their tails off on defense. Uh, they got out to Air Force. Now, Coach Calhoun's a great football coach, and he'll have his team ready to play this week. So, What else? question is, how much can you get? So, Mississippi State played LSU. You can talk to Zach about what they did. Mm-hmm. But their personnel is different than your personnel. Mm-hmm. How much, how productive can those conversations be? How much can you gain from that in such a close time? Um, the, more, the, the, the questions that I asked him more were personnel based. Because you can see guys on film and, and you can get a feel for them, but um, it's hard to tell how really fast they are. I mean, you, you, when you're uh, going against common conference opponents and you're preparing and you've seen those guys week after week after week, you can, you can tell who's fast and who's not. You can tell which guys can get open on defense and which receiver, which guys can cover on defense. And as wide receivers, which ones can get open and as DBs, which ones can cover. I mean, you get a good feel. Um, you watch a, a team like LSU who are going to play, who all those kids are five-star recruits. All of them have been the best. Of, of the state that they come from and all those things. And, and they're going against, uh, when they play Mississippi State, they're going against similar like talent, like you're saying. So it's hard to tell how fast they really are, two of those things. So I can get information like that from, from Zach. Um, schematically, they're, they're doing a lot of different things than what we do. Um, it, it's very, um, it takes, not only does it take a time to get your system installed in, in how you want to be schematically and what we do on defense. But good coaches realize who their best players are. And the best players that Mississippi State has right now as they recruit to what he specifically wants to do, their best players right now are, are really, really good at different stuff. So you, as a coach, you adjust to make sure that you give your team the best chance to be successful. Now, Zach's done a great job in his time there. And – there defensively, they were put in some bad positions because either they turned the ball over or they didn't execute a, a fourth down. And so um, I'm glad that LSU is not going to see the exact same defense two weeks in a row because it helps you prepare. But, I, got, I mean, I got some – it's not game-changing information, but I asked him some personnel questions, and Zach was – he told me what he thought. What's up, Steve? How close is, how close is Christian Jordan to making a big play? Because 
It seemed like he was pretty close against UTEP. He was really close against Boise. He was really close against UTEP. He did. He didn't get here until after the first uh, week of school. Um, hmm. It was close. Close is good in two things, um, horseshoes and hand grenades. So, I mean, it's, it's just like a kid that you see that if somebody – huh? Oh, curling. Yeah. Bocce ball. Okay, we're going to get into the, the specifics of all the um, – He's fast. I lost my train of thought because you're talking about curling. Um, Is he close to making a play? Well, oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, close, being close to making a play or, or somebody constantly telling you that you have potential, that's kind of an insult because if you have potential, that means you're wasting it or they're waiting for you to get good. And potential doesn't win games. Being close doesn't win games. So um, now he's, he's getting into, sh into football shape. Now he was practicing at Southwest because he had planned on staying there. So cardiovascular wise, he's okay. I mean, after about 10 days of being at the altitude, it's fine. Um, learning what to do. Um, he's, he's done a pretty decent job of that. Once he comes into his own, he, I mean, he's, he's pressing kind of like Luke and Nate were. I mean, they hear all the outside noise on offense, having to be explosive and needing a spark and having to do all these things. And so as an inexperienced team, um, there's a lot of guys that are trying to do too much. They're trying to be home run hitters on every single play. And when you do that, it kind of takes you out of your element. It kind of takes you out. I mean, they want so bad to be so good that they try so hard to do things so right, it screws them up. And I thought Nate was a perfect example. Nate relaxed. He played a lot better on Friday night. There's still more out of Nate Jones. Um, Sherrod has handled himself great. He's done a really good job and been very productive. Uh, Luke in the first game was really, really good, but everything he wanted to be was a home run. Uh, the, the perfect example is in the second half, we took a deep shot to Luke on a corner out down there, and he turned about probably 10 yards too soon. And, I mean, you watch Luke run in track. He's smooth. He's fast. When you are out of control, you slow down, and he gave the DB an opportunity to get on top of the route, and then now they're jumping up together, and it's a competitive ball, and neither one of them caught it. If I can get Luke to settle down and, and some of those other guys, there's more opportunity for explosive plays and so, I mean, that's been a big emphasis today. It was an emphasis last week. It helped for Nate, and we'll continue down that path until we have more success.